everyone, Maya here, and this week's featured storybook is The Secret Shortcut. This read aloud is an example of a shared reading, so guided reading, and how you can do guided reading with your child, which means that I'll be asking questions before and after the book to really engage your child and get them into the story and having a conversation about it. It also means that throughout the book, I'll be asking guided questions, incorporating the vocabulary, and pointing out different things in the illustrations just to further get the child involved in the reading. And so that means that after I ask a question, I'll be pausing, and this would be the time that your child would be answering your questions that you're asking and having a conversation with you, or if they're watching this video, then this would be the time that they'd be answering my questions that I'll be asking. So, let's begin our shared reading. So this book is called The Secret Shortcut by Mark Teague, and let's take a look at the cover here. And what do you see? What do you think's going on here? That's right, I see some crocodiles down here, and it looks like they're swinging from some vines. I see a snake. Maybe they're going on some kind of adventure, you think? Maybe. It's a secret shortcut. Well, let's find out. All right. So this book is written and illustrated by Mark Teague, which means that he wrote the words and drew all the pictures. So, on Monday, Wendell and Floyd we're late for school. Ooh, their teacher doesn't look too happy, does she? Mm -mm. They had nearly been captured by space creatures, they told their teacher. Ridiculous, said Miss Gernsblatt, and she warned them to not let it happen again. Space creatures, wow, do you see? Look at, they're holding different weapons in a net. I wonder where they came from. Where do you think? Hmm. Maybe their imagination? But Tuesday was no better. Pirates were loose in the neighborhood. It was sheer bad luck, said Wendell and Floyd, when they showed up late for school. Preposterous, said Miss Gernsblatt. That's ridiculous. Look, pirates? Where did the pirates come from? And on Wednesday, even though Wendell and Floyd left early, a plague of frogs made them late once again. Absurd, cried their teacher. I'm warning you, be here on time tomorrow or else. No more crazy excuses. Do you think that Wendell and Floyd will make it to school on time? What can they do to make sure they get to school on time? Yeah, maybe they can leave earlier. That's a good idea. There's got to be a way to get to school on time, said Wendell. We'll just have to leave earlier. Good idea. Floyd arrived at Wendell's house so early the next morning that the sun was barely up and Wendell was still in his pajamas. I've got an idea, said Wendell, as he quickly got dressed. We'll follow my secret shortcut and get to school even sooner. Oh, a secret shortcut. Do you think it's going to work? Shortcut, asked Floyd. I didn't know there were any good shortcuts to school. This is my secretest shortcut of all, said Wendell. In fact, I invented it myself. He led Floyd up the alley by the Ulick's backyard, then down a culvert, this open drain of water that goes down the street. They went over a fence and through a dense thicket of blackberry vines. I wonder where the shortcut is leading them. What do you think? I hope they make it to school on time. Then they scrambled over some boulders down a steep bank and across a narrow stream. Where did their shortcut take them? Where are they? Yeah, maybe the jungle. I see all kinds of animals. What do you see? A snake, parrot, lots of tropical birds. This is some shortcut, said Floyd. 
Relax, said Wendell. We'll be there in a minute. But the forest became thicker and darker. Soon it was hung with vines. The screeches of strange jungle animals echoed all around. Maybe we took a wrong turn, said Floyd. I'm pretty sure the school is right up ahead, Wendell told him. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think the school's nearby? But the jungle only grew wilder. And when the boys finally came to a trail, it didn't lead straight to school as they had hoped. Instead, it meandered. It twisted and turned through quicksand swamps and past large, sleeping crocodiles. Shh, they have to be really quiet not to wake them up, huh? I wonder where the shortcut's taking them. Where do you think? And they went across a deep, rocky gorge. So this deep, straight down opening between these rocky mountains. I hope they don't fall, huh? It began to get late. Do you think they're going to make it to school on time? This is going to be hard to explain, said Floyd. They stood in a small clearing, this opening. I have an idea, said Wendell. We'll climb a tree and see if we can spot the school. That's kind of a good idea, huh? Who's hanging out in the trees? Monkey. They chose the biggest tree and the tallest tree they could find and climbed all the way to the top. Do you see the school, said Wendell. I don't even see the town, said Floyd. They watched the monkeys playing in the treetops. I have another idea, said Wendell. What do you think his idea is from watching the monkeys? Let's find out. What is it, asked Floyd. He was getting tired of Wendell's ideas. We'll swing from these vines just like the monkeys, said Wendell. That way we'll travel much faster. So you're right, he's swinging from the vines just like the monkeys. And just like the cover of our book, we saw them swinging on the vines. That was a good clue to what happens in the story. Soon they were swinging from vine to vine. This isn't bad, shouted Floyd. I'll bet we'll make good time. I knew this shortcut would work out, Wendell crowed. But at that moment, they ran out of vines. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? The boys landed plop, plop in a giant puddle of mud. Now what do we do, asked Floyd. I don't know, said Wendell. I'm out of ideas. They sat in the puddle and thought about all the trouble they were going to be in. Miss Gernsplot will never believe this story, said Wendell. What do you think they should do? That's a good idea. Well, it is sort of crazy, said Floyd, our story. Just then, from far away, they heard a school bell ring. The school bell? That must mean they're pretty close. Did you hear that, cried Wendell. That was the first bell. We can still make it if we run. They ran until the jungle gave away to the forest, and the forest became woods, and they scurried through Miss Mortley's backyard and up the hill to school. They flew through the door of Miss Gernspot's room and landed squishily in their seats just as the last bell rang. So it looks like they scurried and ran really fast to get to school, huh? I see it in the distance. I hope they make it. Do you think they did? Well, you made it, said their teacher, and just in time. But how on earth did you get so muddy just walking to school? I know, right? Look how dirty they are. Floyd looked at Wendell. Wendell looked at Floyd. On a second thought, said Miss Gernspot, maybe you'd better not say. During recess, Wendell and Floyd sat in the sun to give the mud a chance to dry. At least we finally got to school on time, said Wendell. That's the main thing, Floyd agreed. And in fact, it was quite a while before they were late to school again. They made it right on time, got a little bit of mud, but that's not what's important, right? What's important is that they made it. Even so, 
they never did find a really good shortcut. My friends, it looks like every time they go on a shortcut, they go on a new adventure to a new place. Where do you think they are here? Yeah. I wonder what different adventures they can go on. The end. So, seems like they went on an amazing shortcut adventure and we saw that they go on different adventures at the end. Where are some other places you think they could go? Yeah, all over. Maybe they can go under the ocean or into outer space. I think that a really important part of this story is if you use your imagination, you can really travel anywhere, right? These boys, did you think there's really a jungle in their backyard? Mm, maybe not. So maybe they're using their imagination to go different places. And it also shows you how you can turn a really ordinary, normal place into someplace really exciting. For example, in your backyard, like mine back here, this could be an incredible jungle gym or tall trees or I could trek through the desert. Mine and you, maybe you should go explore your backyard and see what you find. Now every book that is featured here on my storybook comes with additional resources including a brief overview and my review of the story, a list of five vocab words that will come with easy to learn definitions for children that you can highlight throughout the reading of the story. It comes with a list of major themes and ideas that you can discuss with your child before and after the reading. It also comes with a YouTube video example of a shared guided reading like this one right now for this book. And last but not least, each book comes with a creative craft or activity that ties back to the story that you and your child can do together that serves as a kind of extension on the story that brings the story out of the book and into something creative that they can do. So all of these resources can be found in written form on my blog, which you can click on and find on the link below. Also, please feel free to comment and share on your own reading adventures with your children. I would love to hear how they went and hear how your own read alouds go with your kids. Now, new read aloud videos and storybook blog posts come out every Friday, so check back in on Fridays and I will see you next Friday on my storybook for our new reading adventure. Until then, happy reading!